Hello. Welcome to Pals. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Courtney Scott Wright. Hello, hello. And Andrew Flash Gordon. <laughs> hello there. We're continuing on with Season 3 of Mandalorian, Episode 2, Chapter 18. You guys, thanks so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see a cut-down version of our reaction because we can only show you a limited amount of picture-in-picture. Picture. But if you want to watch the whole thing with us, no cuts, no interruptions, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Kawai, or become a member of this channel where you get access to the full uncut reaction, but you will need your own Disney Plus subscription so you can open up each episode in an adjacent window to our reaction. We'll give you a 3 to one countdown sync, and it'll be like you're watching with three of your favorite pals from the internet. Now, if you're watching this on Patreon or memberships already, thanks so much for supporting us here. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, please, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. Pod racing? Is yeah, I was just saying. No? No. Is this it's not. It's not pod racing, but it looks like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's that oh, it is, yeah. Well, I don't appreciate the tone of voice, but I'll fix it. Is he gone? Boot to Eve, that was in episode one, Phantom Menace. Ah, tell the job was the roadie and left. <laughs> she took all his parts. Right, let's put this thing back together again. <laughs> Quickly, before he sees you. Yeah. So what, uh, where's my guy? Oh. like a lerman, huh? I'm looking for a replacement IG memory circuit. Oh, hey, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pal. No chance, Cubes. I need my droid fix now. Which is why I think you should buy this beauty here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Mandalore. I need a droid that can explore ahead of me. That one's like, I'm not having this. <laughs> make sure it's not safe for me. to breathe. Okay, well, he's like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, oh wow! Oh, like, oil bath really, really worked. Really going for it. Is a little fragile. I thought you said it was built for it. That sketch. No, oh, his first time seeing fireworks. Adventure. Such a cool shot. It looks scary, I know, but it was once green and beautiful. It's Mandalore. The home world of our people. I've never been there either. Oh. I grew up there, on that moon, Concordia. And that's Kalevala where we visited Bo Katan. It's in the same system. It's almost like Luke landing in Dagobah. A little bit. Down here, we're completely cut off from the rest of the galaxy. Oh, snap. Oh, boy. Some nice VFX, though. It oh, is yeah. really beautiful. Oh, poor Go fuck. over to that split in the rock and take an air sample of the ruins below. It'll be fine. And yeah. he's gonna fall through. Uh-oh. You can watch him on the scope. It's going quick. Vanish. Yeah, he's gonna disappear. Oh yep. no. It's probably just interference. Mm -mm. He's awfully optimistic about this situation. Don't worry, kid. I'll be right back. <gasps> oh gosh. He's all alone. Oh, don't be scared. You think gonna go he's gonna go out? He can't go out, right? No, he can't go out, but I mean I think he's scared. Sounds like Darth Vader, though. Yes. It's probably on purpose. Oh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Definitely intentional. Whoa. Whoa. It's ruins of the city. <gasps> oh! Oh! Don't let them beat you in battle. Ooh. Whoa. They look like, uh, what are those things from the time machine called? Morlocks? Aww. Oh, you guys snatched properly. Aww, they ripped him up. <laughs> the charts were wrong. The atmosphere is breathable. 
Ah, he could have came out and... Catan was right. Mandalore is not cursed. That's the civic center. This is where Bo-Katan said to go. She did say to go there. That's wild. That's so cool. I guess we're on our own from here. I feel like he should put the top up. Oh, baby Yoda. Or Grogu. <laughs> Love it. Well, Grogu can protect himself a little bit. He's got some force powers. I mean, he's got the force, yeah. I feel like Grogu can protect himself more than a little bit. Yeah, I definitely think he's okay. I'm just he, saying. He, he's still little. He can the floor with all of them with his pinky. That's what I'm trying to say. He's powerful. I mean, he took out the in Boba Fett. Boba that Fett, big, the last episode, yeah. Yeah. Was it a Rancor? Or? Rancor, yeah. Oh, wow. He said a, it's a helmet. Clone trooper. Uh, no, it's a Mandalorian, Mandalorian helmet. helmet. It's the best car you can take back to the lady, right? It's yeah. armor. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Grogu! What is that thing? Like a robot crab. Come on, Grogu! Do something! Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Oh. That is freaky. Whoa. Oh. I love that he makes baby noises still. <laughs> Get to Bogotan. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. I tried. <laughs> I did my part. You're on your own. That cockroach looking thing man. is not going to eat me. Good luck, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this needs to be a ride. <laughs> little Grogu and his little. Oh! See? Escape from Mandalore is the next Disney ride. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay, just pick it up. Just pick it up. Yeah. He's like, I need to go there. Go, R5. What happened to him? Whoa. Okay, kid. I'm going to need you to guide me to him. Can you do that? <laughs> it's like, do I have to? Door five's like, I'll just stay in here. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm, I'm gonna hang back, y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna go watch. Ahead. I'm gonna watch from here. <laughs> <laughs> Something ain't right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going back out there. <laughs> Her suit is pretty badass. Yeah, it is. I wonder if it's difficult to see in those helmets because it looks so narrow. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, there you go. This was once a beautiful civilization. My family ruled it all. Now it's a tomb. <laughs> I need you to guide me to him. <laughs> How good are you with the Force? You must be quite good at it if you got back to me all alone. Just doing a lot of talking in a dangerous area. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh. Oh. Whoa. 
Damn, that was not awesome. Playing. Those are alamites, and we were their next meal. That would drive me crazy. Oh, no, it's like, oh, he's about to drain him. Oh no, oh no. Oh, he's like roasting him like in his own yeah, spit. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's what I was thinking earlier, but. Oh, but. He's just draining him. That's what I'm saying. Oh, there you go, Bo. Yep. She's just wielding that with one wow. hand like no problem. Well, yeah, she try I mean, it's her family sore. She probably knows all about it. Dead. I'm going to get you out of here, right? Oh, what? What? He's going to get into that big like crab a like thing. The big thing, yeah. Yeah. Behind you. Oh, oh, just like Obi Wan yeah. Kenobi in Attack of the Clones, he takes out that crab-like thing. That was sick. She didn't. She didn't uh. win it from him in a fight, so it does. It doesn't belong to her. It doesn't belong to her. She just got to borrow it for a minute. She got to show you how it was supposed to be used. Because he was having a hard time wielding it with two hands. You were right. Mandalore is not cursed. Was I? Look around. There's nothing left. A great society is now memory. <laughs> He's like, I'm hungry. Nothing to cling to but ashes. What is this? You've never eaten pog soup. Oh. Can you appreciate the irony? <laughs> you should rest. I'll get you back to my ship soon enough. I must continue to the mines of Mandalore. It's adorable that you actually believe these children's stories, but there is nothing magic about the waters. Without the creed, what are we? What do we stand for? But I can't go with you until I fulfill my obligation. I will take you. To the living waters? You'd never find them on your own. Not in all this wreckage. Thank you. Don't thank me until you see them. <laughs> I love the look Grogu gave her. Like, mm -hmm. what you gotta say about that? <laughs> it must pain you to see it like this after witnessing its beauty. What pains me is seeing our own kind fight one another time and time again, killing each other for reasons too confusing to explain. It made us weak. We had no hope to resist being smashed by the fist of the Empire. There, the entrance to the mines of Mandalore. That was quick. Well, she knew where she was going. He would have been was wandering like, around that city forever. Was like right around the block. Just take a left and a right. The mines have been here for thousands You're of years. right there. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Your father sounds like an interesting man. I would have liked to have known him. He was a great man. He died defending Mandalore. This is the way. She doesn't like that. What are you looking at? <laughs> He's like, is this the way? Yeah. I just want to make sure we go in the right way. <laughs> Here you go. The living waters. According to ancient folklore, the mines were once a mythosaur lair. Mandalore the Great is said to have tamed the mythical beast. This is it. I've been. Maybe it came back since everybody left. Din, are you all right? Mm -hmm. I was like, I got to do it too. But how's he gonna prove to the armorer that he went? I swear on my name and the names of the ancestors that I shall walk the way of the Mandalore. Something gonna happen? And the words of the creed shall be forever forged in my heart. Oh. I knew it. He was gonna get snatched down. I knew it. I told you the beast came back. I was wondering about that crocodile from episode one. Everybody left. Kind of like uh, Luke Skywalker in the trash compactor where he got pulled yep. down. Yep. Good thing she went with him. Seems like every time Mandalorians do a baptism, <laughs> something goes wrong. <laughs> Stay away from water. <laughs> I mean, it's called the living water. It should have told you a little something. He's taking hell oh, today. Oh, he just fell down. Did he fall down or was he snatched? Because he didn't have his jetpack on. Oh, I don't nope. think so. Yeah. There it is. That's oh, the mythic wow. beast. 
like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's like Cthulhu. That is their, that is their, it does look like a Cthulhu, but that is their helmet. Uh-oh. Is he breathing? Oh, yeah, he, yeah, he all right. She, oh, maybe now she gonna take the way. We're not gonna see her face anymore. <laughs> That's not the end of the is episode, it? is it? Oh, oh my god. Oh, damn. Wow. To be continued. Tag Nabbit. I think she's been redeemed. Oh, like she's found her way back to the way. Back to the way, yeah, because she said the creature wasn't real. I thought the VFX, as you pointed yeah. out earlier, were, were dope. fantastic. Amazing. I mean, like, it was like worthy of a movie. It was so freaking good. The action sequences were really invigorating. I thought they were really story driven, action packed, which I appreciated. I loved seeing, you know, uh, getting to see Bo Katan use the, the, the dark saber, of course. That was freaking freaking awesome, but I really liked a lot of the expositional dumps that we got from her in regards to just explaining more about Mandalore. I thought they were actually really interesting and just fleshing out more of what used to be of this place and just getting a little more of her backstory. And That's again. true. Yeah, I mean, it's got, it's all kind of crystallizing for her, right? Because a lot of it was just, you know, folk tales to her, like Liu Kang in Mortal Kombat. And then come to find out, oh, it really is Raiden. He really is the God of Thunder. You really are Raiden. Come with me kind of like coming back to her religion. When you see Bo-Katan in the Clone Wars, she has already left and is trying to like bring Mandalore back. Her sister Sabine was on the throne at the time. Bo was already like moving towards how do I break our you know, this this mandate that they had done because Mandalore took a vow of peace mm. for a long time. She was, was originally a part of the group that was Death Watch in order to help try and bring back the, the old ways, but she didn't necessarily mean like their original brutal ways of Mandalore. Like she just wanted to free them from the, the ways that they got off track and to bring back the society as a whole. Then to see her now in this live action form where she is like reconnecting to the history because now that her city is in ruins, she's more um, centered in a way. Like this is a calmer version of her that we saw even from season two. Season two, like she was still very angry, still very devoted. Yeah. She had her followers, she had a plan. Last episode was more broken. And even at the beginning of this episode, she was very kind of like just Resolve, Like, I told you I'm done. Can you just be done? But immediately she snapped into action when mm -hmm. Grogu came back. Which, Grogu got some action today. Yeah. yeah. She just needed a cause, basically. She needed a she fight. She needed a reason. And yeah. she needed somebody to, like, remind her who she is. Right. And what a Mandalore does. Like, when she turned to Grogu and was like, did you think your dad was on the Mandalorian? Well, this is the first time he's ever really seen you in action. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that Grogu wasn't more capable, I guess, in these in those harrowing moments, because he's done some serious damage in previous seasons. If I was Mando, I'd, I'd hold him up like Carl Urban holding up the babies and the boys, the, the, <laughs> the laser babies. <laughs> that was diabolical. Force, force everywhere. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, if you think about it, like whenever Grogu has... I know. Yeah. Whatever he has, like, really shown his abilities, yeah. per se, Mando has been there. Right. You know, like, he's always been like, that's his person. Like, I trust him, and I know he's got my back. But this time, like, he, Mando told him to go and get her. But he, you know, he's met her. He didn't really know her. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you sent me to go to see a stranger. You sent me an Auntie Bo, but I don't really know her. Right, right, You know right. what I mean? Like, so Mando's kind of like, that's his, you know, it's that's like his person. It's Grogu's like, access to his own powers, in a way. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's necessarily his accent, but it's his safety net. Like, okay. I feel safe using them. You know, like, even when he tried to free him, he tried to free him by himself. Yeah. That scene was, like, terrifying and hilarious all at the same time. Watching yeah. him walk. Like, he was he's walked faster today than he's ever walked yeah, before. That's the most we've seen him walking ever. <laughs> this know. episode, though, did a really good job of building up tension, I thought, because there were yeah. so many moments where I was really feeling for the characters, feeling for their safety, and... Din Djarin really took a bunch of L's in this episode. Yeah! But I thought, yeah. I, I did think, though, that... So Kate... did your light. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Made for a funny reaction from us. Like, what was that? Yeah. Um, it's like, someone using the force in here? I thought Katie Sackoff, though, she gave a really good performance in this episode. I really, so Again, good. I just... Uh, the expositional dumps and just her in action, I, I really liked what she did. Uh, her interactions with Grogu, obviously Grogu... I mean, he can only emote, and we obviously know what he's thinking, but just her interactions with Grogu and her interactions with uh, Din Djarin, like, I just thought she did just such a great job in this episode, and you could really feel like 
just how much it pained her to be back and just what has become of Mandalore. I just thought she did such a great job in this episode. Yeah. I wish the action sequences, the fight, the fights were a little bit longer. Easiest way to put it is I wish that that there was a little bit more damage done to our main characters in the process of those fights. Like she can still come out looking like a badass. He can still come out looking cool. But like I wanted there to be more, just more going on. You know, make the make the make the episode was this forty five minutes. Make it forty six minutes. You know, give us thirty more seconds of action on each of them, each of them. You know, he's been a Mandalorian for you know at least twenty years now. She was raised in it. So honestly, I think it was for me. It was accurate to see him struggling a little not struggling per se but like the, he's in unfamiliar territory sure. and he's with these creatures that he doesn't know yeah, doesn't yeah. know their history yeah, doesn't know element. how he's out of his element he's never experienced them before no you're right whereas her I would expect her to lay them down right. quickly she knew exactly what was going on mm-hmm. she knew above like what was happening and she knew how to disarm them right. quickly yeah she knew what to expect and I also yeah. love too like, this that, is her home right. yeah and I also love too how she sprung right into action when Grogu came to see her and she saw that Din was not there and also when Din was pulled down. I just yeah. love how yeah. she sprung right into action, like right not away. even hesitating. Like, ah, now forget him. I just want that dark safe. No, she's right into action. So, right, she, like I think he's the only one that she has left. Yeah, honestly. And but when she pushed Grogu back, like again, sprung right in. I know what's happening. I need you to move back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, to what you're saying, I mean, it is a good contrast to see him struggle more because, like, he still was having to wield it with two hands, mm-hmm. and whereas she just was able to one hand that shit like a like a Chinese sword or something like that. Well, it kind of reminded me again. I keep making re- callback references is obviously to uh, previous Star Wars films. It kind of reminded me of in Empire Strikes Back where Vader's just toying with Luke in terms of he can wield it with one hand, the lightsaber. I guess and then true. And then the Luke had to use both hands. So kind of just, you know, the experience level. Well, that and, like, she knows the lore of the sword. Like, she yeah. knows that... Um, House Vizsla, like, where the sword came from and the history and, like, how it, it, it goes up against... You know what I mean? Like, goes up against the tension, and like, it's n- not a regular lightsaber. She ends Rebels with the dark saber, so she had it for a while. Okay, so okay. somehow Moff Gideon got it from her. That's his name, right? Yeah, yeah, that's his name. Somehow he got it from her. So we don't have All that right. story yet. Okay. Did you like this episode better or the first one? I like this one better. It felt me more too. focused. I liked yeah, them me too. Both. But I like this them one both was too. like the tension of this, like you said, like the tension of mm-hmm. like me being concerned for the characters from the minute he lands on Mandalore. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Even when we lost our five, like, oh, you know, something's going wrong. Um, I just felt like the way this was crafted from the story from the beginning to the end was just really like exciting and nerve-wracking I, I knocked over the light and uh, and like and even at the end we were like that's not the end and we literally in unison yeah. were like no you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. re- i i i maybe i did like this one better it was definitely really well paced i thought for sure because Absolutely. it did not feel like 40 41 minutes or whatever it was. no it went quick a common thing i experience with disney plus shows is this anxiety when some scenes go on too long that I and I want them to get to the next scene because I know it's not the action point yet and I'm like oh god come on this is only 40 minutes come on like when we were spending time at the beginning with that lady who, who deals with the junk parts and tattooing whatnot. yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's like it's all cute and all but come on come we gotta get to the next thing because we've only got 40 minutes don't, don't spend too much time here exactly uh, um, I'm like the Jawas are cute yeah, yeah you yeah. speak Jawa language that's very interesting can we move on yeah I love when she was speaking Japanese I loved it too no it's like, cool I love her it's, like it's just that I, I know that there's a limited amount amount of time yeah, no, no, and no, so course, it, it gives me just a tad of a bit of anxiety and stress because yeah. I'm like Ugh, it's gonna cut off right when I don't want it to I know that's gonna happen and mm-hmm. it sure enough it did but it ended because in a that good point look even yeah. though like you know how in season one at least maybe it was just me that said this in season one I felt like I didn't get a strong sense of his um emotions and feelings okay. as the Mandalorian whereas now and Katie Sackhoff we haven't spent much time with her as a Mandalorian but even just that look that turnaround look to him with her mask on and him like struggling after just being yanked out of the water like I know there was so much behind that immediately shift mm-hmm. that immediate look she gave to him like and when she saw the creature under the water like you knew what she was feeling it's the strength of the actors like when they uh know how to just emote body language as well when we're like we can tell what they're feeling and thinking I think it's just a strength that, that they have uh, characters are also getting a little arc or she is anyway yeah you know from the first episode like you mentioned where her starting place is definitely different than where than where we are at with her at this point and it's definitely left us at a good cliffhanger point so we'll conclude on that you guys thanks so much for hanging out hopefully you enjoyed that with us do subscribe bell icon all notifications 
vote this up. I'm Jabby Coy. This is Courtney Wright. And Andrew Flash Gordon. Peace out.